thing that has always fascinated me about clouds is the fact that they float. Um, and, you know, I've always loved just looking up and daydreaming, looking at clouds. And so I started studying them and learning a little bit about the science behind clouds. Working with climatologists, I wanted the cloud to be scientifically accurate. I didn't want it to be an artist's rendition of a cloud or a drawing of a cloud or something that I thought about clouds. I wanted it to be about how magical they are in the natural world. So there was a group of um, scientists who were in Zurich when we started working together and now they're at Caltech and um, they do weather modeling. So I asked them if they would be willing to work with me and they created a model of weather. So they ran a super a program that they'd written in a supercomputer and this program ran for I think it was five or six days. It was the longest calculation they had ever run and this is the block of weather they came up with. So this is a small piece of the environment and the cloud that we focused on was this cumulus cloud in the middle. Working with them they were able to calculate the exact water weight of the cloud and then I was able to create a weight equivalency between the simulated cloud and the cloud in marble. I was wondering if there was a way to create an equivalency in glass, how clouds are forming. Glass ceramics. So it's a material that is a glass, starts as a glass, and then transforms into a ceramic. And where it's more, more opaque, you can see that's, that's the glass becoming a ceramic. And so it literally is an equivalent process to the moisture in the air coalescing around or nucleating around that small particle. Any particle in the air is, is what the, the water nucleates around. The other thing that's really interesting about these clouds is that I, for the first time, I poured glass into digitally printed sand molds. Um, and I don't think it's ever been done anywhere as far as I know. And that's Stratocumulus. And it's one that I had never been a fan of. It reflects all the light and heat of the sun back up. So um, this cloud is in danger of becoming extinct because of the amount of CO2 in the air. There's very, you know, there's parameters under which this cloud can form. And if the levels of CO2 in the environment go too high, then this cloud can't form. That will sort of accelerate the climate change at, at an exponential rate. So they encouraged me, you know, although I was quite focused on the cumulus cloud, they said, well, it would be interesting to see what you could do with this. So I started, um, again, using the digitally printed sand molds taking the data and just transferring it right in and into the sand bed and then pouring glass in. It's visually spectacular. Um, and the, the level of detail and all of the complexity of the casting wouldn't be possible with the classical technology. You know, so it's really a moment of sort of science meets technology meets art um, meets climate change. carbon was related to my artwork and um, I was able to figure it out and then double that number so that I knew I was in case I had missed anything that I captured it 
and um, I offset all of the carbon associated with me and my artwork. Now, all these objects are carbon neutral at the very least and carbon negative, most likely. A lot of people pay to plant trees, and that's a carbon offset, but then those trees are later cut down and turned into paper or burnt or whatever. So it undoes the carbon offset. And these projects are like, um, they're less glamorous than trees. They're, a lot of them are um, helping people in Africa or China. It's called a biodigester. And it is something that on farms, you put the animal poop into the biodigester and then it creates methane, which is also a very corrosive um, gas. And they use the gas to cook. And as the, the animal waste breaks down, it turns into fertilizer. So on the farm, they're no longer burning wood to cook. And they don't have to get any industrial fertilizers. It's a, a win-win-win. Sky mining, so actually mining carbon from the sky, turning it into a solid format, and then you know, in sort of a circular way, reintroducing it into an industrial process. So when the scientists really introduced me to the stratocumulus cloud and the danger of it becoming extinct because of carbon, I think for the first time I really started understanding the mechanics of climate. The most recent idea that I really like that I will try is um, I wanted to, instead of snow in a snow globe, sort of again thinking about our planet as a closed system, I wanted to make a snow globe that instead of the make-believe snow has actually real carbon captured from the environment. So that, you know, with some scene, um, and so when you shook it, that the carbon, the snow globe would become black, and then slowly the carbon would settle down. And I think that that sort of the visual reality of it, that people will start to really understand how it's a mechanical issue. We just need to stop putting carbon into the environment and take as much carbon as we can out of the environment. There's an expression, I, I'm sitting on cloud nine. Um, when they first labeled all of the clouds, they had, you know, they just gave them numbers one through nine. And cloud number nine was cumulonimbus, which is the tallest of all of the clouds. So when we say like I'm sitting on top of cloud nine, it means I'm as high as I could be. Um, I've always loved that, that expression.